Hi, my name's Sam and this is Frugal Isma. Welcome to day one of 100 Days of Sewing. And to start off with, um, I'm going to start talking about the equipment that I think that you will need. Um, but today will be specifically about um, sewing machines. Okay, so let's get started. Um, obviously, um, you don't actually need a sewing machine to sew. You can sew by hand. Uh, but I'm going to specifically focus on, on uh, people who do want to sew with a sewing machine. Um, obviously it's going to be quite a bit faster with a sewing machine, but it can be done without, without. lots of people do it. Maybe you've already got a machine somewhere uh, and you just don't use it. Um, I'll, look at, I'll look at that a little bit for you today. Um, but I'm going to specifically try and talk about how to obtain a machine if you don't already have one. Um, and starting with how I came across my first one. So my first one is a Jones and I got this, it's very heavy so I'll just quickly show you. The old mechanical machine and it's still going. That's the machine that my mum bought me uh, 30, 30 plus years ago when I first started wanting, wanting to sew. Uh, it's got um five um sort of stitch types going from uh straight to uh, very zigzags and then four stitch lengths and that's your lot <laughs> uh and then just a tension wheel uh it, it is a electric but not electronic or digital and that served me very very well up until about seven years ago uh, it doesn't have a buttonhole uh, stitch it doesn't have anything fancy at all it's just straight stitch these machines, these mechanical machines, just keep going and keep going and keep going. And in fact, my electronic one started playing up, which I got fixed, but it started pin, uh, playing up at about Christmas time. I I'd taken the Jones into the sewing machine shop last year to have it serviced, luckily. So this was uh, like a brand spanking new machine, absolutely no bother at all. It, it, just, it just keeps going and going. Um, Mum bought that second hand for me 30 years ago and it, it will, it'll, it'll outlive me with that machine. So if you're looking for a machine, um, second hand is perfectly fine. But my first part of call I would suggest is beg, steal or borrow one. If you're new to sewing and you don't know whether you're um, going to take to it or not, um, ask around, ask family, ask friends, tell people that you're wanting to learn to sew. Um, you'll be surprised how many people have got them lurking either in the back of the wardrobes or in the in the attic somewhere, possibly inherited from a grandparent. I'm not going to say grandma because granddad sewed as well. Um, but you'd be surprised how many people have got one. And I would say ask somebody who sews about it as well because while I would never be willing to let you lend my, um, my Janome, which is the one that I use now, I'd, I'd quite happily lend that out to somebody for to to see to see if they they wanted to sew. Um, a lot of sewers who sew a lot probably got, have got more than one machine. Um, that's the first of th of three normal sheet machines that I've got, and I know I've got an overlocker as well. The three machines that I've uh, I've bought, they've all been second hand. I've never bought a new machine. My overlocker came from Lidl, which if you're not from the UK, is just a cheap supermarket, um, and I think it was about £129, I think. Um, so, yeah, on to, uh, on to uh, beg stealing and borrowing. Obviously, I don't recommend you steal it, but um, borrowing or um, if, if somebody's got a spare somewhere that they're happy to, to um, let you lend until you, you really know that you like the, the, um, the hobby. If you, if you also speak to somebody who sews regularly, they might know somebody who... Uh, is getting rid of a machine. You might just drop lock it and somebody might be upgrading and they're wanting to um, either get rid or quite happy to loan, loan their old one out. Like I said, I keep hold of that one uh, just in case my other one, for, for whatever reason, won't work. It's only let me down that once, that was at Christmas when I was trying to sew a, a pattern test, which was a little bit annoying, but I managed to do a whole and I'll insert a picture of the, the coat that I sewed on, on this machine. It, it was a, a, quite a feat to do it.
other people to ask. Uh, let it be known at, at work, perhaps, or um, colleagues, or speak to your uh, parents, or your mum, your dad, your, your, your grandparents, and just say you're fancying this hobby. Do you know anybody who's got a machine? You might be surprised who, who's willing to lend you one. So on to my second machine, which I've not brought up here. I'll, 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 I'll insert a picture, which is the Genome XL601. And when I was looking to upgrade the Jones one there, um, I had a word with my mum's neighbour, uh, Margaret, who is a quilter. And um, she had the uh, Genome XL601 and she was quite happy to show me hers and recommended it. Even though she, she didn't do a lot of garment sewing, she did a little bit of garment sewing. Uh, and that, were, that was an interesting conversation, actually, because um, she put me onto rotary cutters. I'd always use scissors. Lots of little hints and tips um, that, you know, I, I probably would never have, have known about or, or got to know, know about uh, without speaking to her. Um, so she didn't lend me a machine, she just gave, gave me a recommendation. How I got my second machine was from eBay. If you ever go onto the Martin Lewis website, he has a local eBay tracker, I think it's called. I'll put a link below. And essentially you just put in your, your postcode and um, it, it brings up collection only items. And the beauty of that is something like a sewing machine. I think um, sewing machines, couriers are quite particular about um, transporting them. Um, so you find a lot of them are collection only. Um, so if you put in your postcode and whatever mileage that you're prepared to go collect one, uh, you might pick one up that way. And my genome was virtually new. It was, I think it retails now at around about 370 some pounds, still for sale, still for sale new. Um, and I picked it up for 175 and I think the lady said she'd used it five times. Uh, so just a, just a word about buying second hand. Obviously we're in a pandemic at the moment, so perhaps going into people's houses isn't gonna be ideal. But under normal, normal circumstances, and when I got my machine, this is what I did. I was invited, I went with my husband, she, she was uh, in her home, uh, and she just showed me how, to, how it operated. She sat down and she showed me how it operated, um, said that she was a quilter, she'd got another big uh, machine upstairs, that she bought this machine um, to transport to sewing lessons, but found that it was too a little bit too heavy for that particular purpose and was getting rid of it. I had the receipt and everything. I mean, it, I was really, really lucky. It was still in Yorkshire. Um, whether you get something like that or not, or not now, uh, if everybody's been sewing, I'm not sure. And obviously you, you've got to um, have your wits about you buying, buying like that. I mean, it, it, at least with eBay, when you're buying, you've got a bit of a guarantee. You've got the PayPal guarantee. Buyer beware, I think, is probably the best <laughs> best thing on that one. Uh, there's probably no guarantees with things like this. So you, I, my advice would be to take somebody who sews with you. Um, that way you've got an extra little bit of added protection and they will be able to, if, if the person who's selling it doesn't know the way around the machine, they certainly will. Um, my singer, again, I've not brought that up here, it's really, really heavy. That came off Gumtree and my husband uh, was looking for fishing tackle and came across it very, very locally. They wanted £20 for it and that was just a case of uh, somebody, it was somebody's mum's, he'd got no idea how a machine worked. Um, and I was just happy to have a, a nice old singer in, in my little collection. You don't need three machines, you need one. <laughs> Um, but this is what happens when you've been sewing a long time, you just acc accumulate them. So, yeah, just have a, have an ask around, have a look on Gumtree, eBay, what have you. Um, things like that, you, you'd be surprised um, how you can come across them. But again, um, just when, when you're on eBay or something like that, you just really need to know what you're looking at, really. Um, what you're letting yourself in for, um, you know, make sure it doesn't say spares or repairs or, or something like that. But there's also in the UK, I'm, I'm obviously UK based, so I can't, I can't talk about other, other countries. Um, I, think, uh, I think it's possibly Craigslist uh, is the equivalent to Gumtree in the US. 
like leave a comment below if um, if you're in a different country uh, and you've got something similar to either Craigslist or uh, Free Cycle we have here as well, where people are just essentially just getting rid of stuff for free. Um, depends where you live on Free Cycle, I think, on, on how much success that you have with things like that. We do have uh, a free cycle group in my particular area, but I think in bigger cities, I think it's more common. My son's just moved up from London and got rid of quite a lot of stuff on uh, free cycle. It suits them um, to, to the, you know, they're not dumping things, um, but obviously it is cash only. Uh, you possibly either meeting strangers or, uh, uh, um, you know, people are coming to your house or whatever. So that's got to be within your comfort zone. Um, but you know you've got to you've got again it's it's buyer beware really you've got to you've got to have your wits about you with things like that uh so my my best advice really is just ask around and see if somebody's got one that they're willing to lend you just on a short term basis um before you can uh decide whether that it's the hobby for you is the, the, there's not a great deal of point in paying 375 pounds on a machine that you're going to get out once or you're scared to death of using it because it's you know it's just befuddling you so the other word of warning uh, about buying second hand is uh, there's no point getting a bargain for 20 pounds if you're going to have to pay somebody 50 pounds to have a look at it and maybe more than that if there's needs any spares or repairs so you really do need to uh, know what you're looking for it's a bit like buying a second hand car i suppose so yeah if you if you're brand new to sewing i would advise against buying a brand spanking new machine uh, just just because you don't know whether you're going to take to it or not um, lots of uh, sewing machine dealers will sell you a refurbed machine and that's probably a good way to go because you will get a guarantee with that as well be able to go to uh, a shop or, a, or even some, sometimes there's a you know a bigger bigger environment where you can try out many different machines Sometimes I've got a little one local to me in Huddersfield. Is a I think he's a, a repair shop, but he takes on old machines. There's a fabric shop in uh, Dewsbury close to me. He sells old machines, and I think you'll probably get a little bit of a guarantee with those as well. Uh, so it's always worth looking around. And if you in a position like I was, where I had one recommended to me, the the Genome, you can always do a little search online, see what they're selling for, see what, what's the best price. A lot of um, places will do your deal where they throw in some thread or, or whatever. Honestly, if, you, if you're if you new to sewing, don't go for one with all the bells and whistles. It'll probably, if you've never sewn before, it'll probably, number one, probably befuddle you. And number two, the genome that I've got, it has 29 stitches. I only use three or four. I use a buttonhole stitch, I use a straight stitch, there is a lightning stitch on there and obviously the zigzag. Um, the other ones, very, very rarely, you can do without. And like I say, this Jones that I had for years and years, just a straight st stitch and a zigzag of, you know, three or four different um, lengths of zigzag. And that's it. <laughs> uh, you can change the needle position on it, but apart from that, that's it. The hardest thing, I think, with the machine is um, threading it up. And I'm not going to go into how to thread a machine up. At nearly every machine, if you've, if you've just got a machine and you're, you're a bit scared of using it, nearly every machine there will be a YouTube video somewhere online that will tell you how to thread it up and how to use it. Just Google Google it and, and you'll find it. I know it sounds like I'm, I'm brushing it apart, but there's so many different machines that uh, there's no point me showing you how to thread my machine. I can do if you want me to do a separate video on it on mine. I can do that for you, not a problem. Uh, but they're, they all... Uh, they're similar, but they're you know they're all different. And the best thing to do really is just um, Google it. And the same for instructions. If you find you, you've got a new mach a machine from somebody, but there's no instructions, 99 times out of 10 you can get the instructions online, and just sit there and read them and and play with them. If you have um, if you are one of these who have got a machine and you've never used it, either you've inherited it or whatever, why don't you spend this weekend just having a play with it and uh, Googling it and YouTubing it and seeing how you can you can have a what stitches it does what the tension should be uh, and what have you so leave me a comment below uh, and let me know what sort of machine you've got um, and what how you came by yours I'd like to know if everybody else has got like me that, that they've got their machines um, second hand or whether they've inherited them or it's a bit of a memory from a grandparent or something like that every time you sew on your old singer you're thinking of your grandma um, I call my singer Pearl, by the way, and I will put an in, uh, I'll put a picture of her in there for you. Um, but 
I don't, I haven't named the other ones. And that's another one. Do you name your machine? Bob that below as well. So that's it for me today. Um, and I will be back tomorrow and talking about other equipment that you do need. Okay, see you later. Bye. Thank you.